Oh, for a tiny island, it's a very nice show around. I would have regretted not coming here. I'm glad I spontaneously did. Little did I know, a spontaneous visit to a Majuro Islet would have a deep connection to a U.S. nuclear presence in the Marshall Islands. A spewing column of smoke nine miles into the sky. Blinding light stronger than the sun. Bikini Atoll. Equal to a discharge of 60,000 depth charges, each weighing 600 pounds, strikes the ears of the observers. Many miles away, the raging might of searing flame, crushing force, and deadly radioactive water is seen falling in a killing mist. Little did I know that the island that I visited is the new home for many people from Bikini Atoll. If you're not familiar with that name, Bikini is one of three islands that the United States tested nuclear bombs. We bombed these islands during the entire decade of the 1950s. There was a day that I just decided to go to the end of the island. Uh, that was in Darit, also known as the Spoon, which ironically looks like a spoon. When I was there, I noticed a bunch of boats coming in and out of a location, and it seemed like they, go they were going to these different islets. Because of my travel curiosity, instead of going back to town, I ended up going to this spot where these boats were coming and going. to the island of Eji just just because no reason no purpose just to come thank you Yolani for showing me around the island this is called the jumbo 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 a shore around of the island jumbo, jumbo. I was really grateful to Iolani for showing me around the small island, but it was through our conversation and talking story and asking questions where I found out that the very small island I was on was one of several homes. Let me correct myself. One of several places Bikini Atoll residents had to relocate. And thus the natives express to the people of the United States their welcome. Despite the fact that the apple of Bikini may be utterly destroyed come July the 1st. But to the natives, in their simplicity, and their pleasantness, and their courtesy, they're more than willing to cooperate. Although they don't understand the world of nuclear energy any more than we do. And though they have no way of understanding what the test is all about. What I was experiencing and observing on the island was a very slow and ongoing relocation effort on the island. They had a small church, a small hospital, even had a little police station. What I did appreciate seeing was a small school there, a bunch of soldiers helping to fix it up and keep it clean. <laughs> Jeez. Relocation efforts of Bikini Atoll residents is, is really sad. The, the living conditions in some of the places that they relocated to weren't the, weren't the greatest. But reading about Kili Atoll is, is really heartbreaking. When residents relocated to Kili Atoll, food was very different as the, the food production was not nearly anything that was as fresh on Bikini. And it's also said it's really hard to anchor off the island which would make it a lot harder for residents to get goods. Discussed plans with the Bikini natives for the evacuation of the atoll. The islanders are a nomadic group and are well pleased that the Yanks are going to add a little variety to their lives. Unlike other Pacific islands, the next challenge to face 
as climate change. All right now, James, will you tell them that the United States government now wants to turn this great destructive force into something good for mankind, and that this experiments here at Bikini are the first step in that direction. It's already good, and they're willing to go, and everything we need to My personal thoughts on it, it's just, it's really heartbreaking. Bikini Atoll residents have been provided, let's just say cash, for their relocation efforts and their hardships. It doesn't look like it has been that much. But realistically, you can't put a dollar amount for what is essentially your home. It's one thing to live in a house, but when it comes to a place that encompasses your culture and your being as a people, take that away, you gotta ask yourself, what's left. Thank you all for watching this video. Please excuse the poor lighting. I'm currently in the process of updating and upgrading my vlog and equipment. I've just recently got a new camera and microphone, and I hope this has really boosted the quality of my content. Not only do I enjoy helping people learn about other parts of the world, but I hope it inspires people to not only travel, but follow their dreams. I'm sure you hear it from other YouTubers, but these videos, do, they do take time. It does take a lot of hard work. That being said, if you would like to support me and my content, join me over on Patreon. It's a great way to support content creators like myself, as it helps support me to get equipment like this camera, this microphone, and eventually, better lighting equipment. Thank you once again guys for joining me and I'll see you on the next voyage.